Welcome guys, thank you for watching this video, but before we proceed, do not forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, share it to all of your friends, and also check out the description for further information guys. And now, let's get into the video. Alright guys, so welcome to today's video or mini tutorial, and yeah, so today's video is going to be much much more shorter because I'm under I'm under time pressure currently and you guys had many many well 30 minutes to one hour videos in the past and therefore please excuse that this video is going to be a little bit more shorter okay so today's topic is going to be a basic teleport button so similar to what I have done in my one piece uh, video my how to make one piece game season 2 video and my um, anime tower defense video but there were some yeah some of you guys who maybe did not understand how how this clearly works and just ask me whether yeah whether I could create a short mini tutorial on that so on the on the question or yeah on the following question that um, how you're actually able to create a text button which teleports you to a certain place after being pressed so how does that work and it is it is quite easy so let me just quickly show you what we need so we will need a screen GUI because of our button and instead of that button we will need a local script and then you can create a remote event instead of the replicated storage and after that, you can create a basic script instead of the server script service. I'm just going to keep the names by default because I'm just going to show you this quickly. So there is nothing much about it, I promise. Okay. So what what is going to happen? Basically, when we press this button, our local script is going to realize or notice that click. And after the button has been clicked, our local script notices that and then fire servers this remote event and fire serving this remote event will cause a reaction of the script which is basically the teleportation to another place right here so that is what is going to happen okay so let me just quickly script that so as i've said the first step is to click the button and to make the local script realize that the button has been clicked so how do we do that we need to refer to the text button in the first place so we need to do script parent script parent and now mouse button one click so mouse button is clear now one is the left mouse button and click is yeah when it has been clicked there's also mouse button two click i think wait <laughs> i might be well, i might be talking trash at this point yeah no there, there actually is and that is supposed to be the right mouse button Okay, so this is an event. When the left mouse button has been clicked, then connect function. And then we want to fire server this remote event. So to fire server it, we need to refer to it. And since this is inside of the replicated storage, we just do game get service, replicated storage, remote event, connect. No, not, not connect. Never mind that part. Okay, so we have referred to our remote event. Let's put this in sort of a wait for chat because it might happen that our player loads a little bit too fast and is not able to actually refer to the remote event at that second and therefore causes some trouble. So let's just add this wait for child in order to prevent that trouble. Okay. So we have referred to the remote event. Now let's do a fire server. And yeah, let's write teleport inside as an argument which is being passed. So we are now fire serving this remote event once this text button right here has been pressed. Now we need to script the reaction part. So how is this going to work? We of course, since since this whole system depends on the remote event, so since since that or because of that, we will need to refer to the remote event once again. And then write on server event, which basically is an event 
uh, yeah, which just notices or realizes when the remote event has been fire servered. Okay, so I have just talked about this argument. So when fire servering, you can also pass some arguments. And the first argument, which is automatically being passed, therefore no, no mentioning right here is needed. So the first argument, which is being passed automatically, is the player. So player. And the second one is always, yeah, something you write inside. And then after that, you have your third one, uh, fourth one, fifth one, etc. And always remember, the first one is actually the player, which is not being passed right here. As I've said, it is just automatically being passed. Okay, now we can just... So task is supposed to be this argument. And now we can, yeah, we can just check if task equals teleport if that's the case then we want to continue so we could have just uh yeah left this out so we we could basically just delete it and then delete this task thing right here as well but this would make the remote event only function for this teleport task so if you want to yeah make the remote event do multiple tasks then you really need to use this task uh, method or system uh, in order to tell the script what kind of reaction it is supposed to show for which argument right here. So this one basically makes it player teleport. And let's say that this remote event is supposed to do a little bit more apart from teleporting. So the first task is to teleport. Let's say there is another task which makes the player um, die. Okay, so for whatever reason, it just, it just makes the player die. Then having no argument at this point and just expecting the script to make the player die is a little bit unlogical because you need this task argument in order to tell the script what kind of task is supposed to be done you know so i've just um went a little bit more deeper inside of that but i hope that it got more clear to you so in our case we could leave it out because our remote event is, is only supposed to make us teleport but in the real case so in an, in an actual case, when you create a game, you basically have um, yeah a few remote events which just handle all the server things, and you will need those arguments. Trust me. So, okay, we are fire servering. We are checking if the task is to teleport, and if, and if that's the case, then we want to refer to a certain service. So, game get service teleport service. So this service is supposed to teleport a certain player or certain players it also can re reserve servers which you guys um, consider as uh, consider as a private server etc and this teleport service has many many cool features which we can take a look at in maybe future episodes of this mini tutorial series but um, yeah so that's for the future we only want to take a look at this teleport function for today and this function right here yeah, basically teleports you to a certain place. Okay, so how is this supposed to work? So this one, first of all, needs the place ID. So a place is another place within the game, of course. So you are not able to teleport from one game to other game. So you wouldn't be able to teleport from Murder Mystery to Grand Peace Online as well. So that's not possible because these two are different games. But you're able to teleport from the Murder Mystery Lobby to a Murder Mystery Map, for example, if that would be the actual case, which is which it is not because the lobby and the uh, maps are in one place. But it's, it's, it's just an example, guys. Okay, so we need to uh, yeah, open this up, then add a new place. And as you can see, this place number 34. So I, I have just created this one. And you will, yeah, wait, 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 wait. So just, just before some of you complain, so you can open up this menu by right clicking on this top bar. So, so if any of these things are missing, as you can see, they all have names. So this one is called Properties, this one is called Explorer, this one is called Asset Manager. You, if one of these things are missing, then you can just basically right-click on this top bar. So OBS is not recording that step, but a yeah a frame will appear, which makes you select all of these things, okay? So I could, for example, deselect the Explorer and select it again. 
So if your asset manager is missing, then just um, do as I've told you. Okay, so we have just added this place right here. Let's let's right click, and OBS is not recording that as well, but you can copy the ID to the clipboard. So that's what we want to do. And the first argument of our teleport function is the ID which we have just copied, as far as I know. And the second one is the player. And that's it. Now let's play this game. And if everything works, so, or if everything works, then we shouldn't be able to teleport to the other place because Roblox does not allow to teleport within Studio. As you can see, exception wise signaling cannot teleport in the Roblox Studio. And that's good. Because as I've said, we are, we are not allowed to teleport when testing in Studio, but we, it would work out when we, yeah, when we would have been in an actual game. But that's it with this video, guys. I hope that you have enjoyed it. If so, leave a like, subscribe, share this video to all of your friends. Also, sorry for this short tutorial, but I have been dropping many, many long videos in the yeah in the past time. And I hope that you can excuse it, guys. And also, thank you for your overwhelming support, guys. I really love you and I really appreciate the support on all of my videos. And especially on the new series, on the new anime Battleground series. And I'm sorry if it is, well going a little bit more slow for you guys so we did not start with the characters right away but as i've already said in my first episode or my second episode we are laying the base for the future episodes which are going to be about creating the characters etc guys okay so with that being said take care and see you in the next video